I'm super, super, super excited for how this slate floor is going to look after realizing that we could do an even better job. We're taking the opportunity to go ahead and try this and this kind of slate floor bottom. I think everything's going to fit like a glove, knowing those two guys and their attention to detail, but I'm super excited how it's going to turn out. So, let's go. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, start of day two. So we got the aqua blocks in, as well as the pump vault for the intake area. This is going to be that intake bay skimmer on steroids. The reason we have the aqua blocks down in front is just for water storage, but the guys are also working very hard on trying to get this rock set right here between Jack and Dan, which will set that peninsula. And then they can go ahead and start working that brick wall back behind and connecting those two areas and making that backwater cove. So super important when doing this, if inside of a, an existing pond that you have we have a piece of scrap liner wrapped in front of the aqua blocks. And what that'll do is that's going to prevent any infiltration going down through the aqua blocks. We want the water to be skimmed across the top. So that's why we have that drop liner in there. We're gonna seal it up on both sides there, as well as here, and be able to push that water across the top of the surface once we get this area rocked in in front. We're gonna also put some metalla mats on top of the aqua blocks to help with filtration. Just that mechanical filtration. People come in here and fish all the time and they're all honestly overfed and we want to avoid any junk and debris getting down to help help with that bio load so we're going to put some metal mats on top of the aqua blocks so that those can be easily removed and rinsed off occasionally instead of trying to clean the whole system with all that sediment and stuff fall and debris falling down to the very bottom of the pump vault so a couple things we're doing a little bit unique in here but again a little bit more custom So we've got the top course on. You can see Jack over here pulling this liner up. Now they're gonna start moving that sand back behind that liner to hold that liner up, as well as fill this whole void space down and through here. Super important that we try and eliminate as many of those folds as we possibly can when working our way in through here. And then that liner stays up nice and vertical all the way through. Another area of concern is going to be this right here. This right here is where the seam runs and connects the two liners. You can see there's two liners there. You can see a little bit of the tape. It's important that that seam on this side as well as over there stays well above water level. So they're gonna go ahead and pull that liner up as taut as they can this way and then get a bunch of sand packed in through there. The patio will end up coming out over the top of this cantilevering out over the top of this wall, changing the shape. But I love this backwater cove area that was created. It's about two feet deeper than the original face of those spills away walls it kind of ran right in through here so i love the shape of this pond now adds a little bit more depth and dimension not so much water depth but just depth for the overall design giving it a much more unique shape and it isn't nearly as straight over here we'll eat up some of the patio space by doing it this way but i think there's still a considerable amount of room to put a small love seat or sofa or at least a cafe table and some chairs over here just to kind of set the stage this is all looking great and then over here is that intake bay area you can see Jack is essentially right where the water is going to rip through this area, getting back to the pumps that are going to be sitting in that pump vault, which Roy is working on putting two bulkheads on the back of the liner. And we are going to run those pipes through the bulkheads instead of up over the liner because of how close that liner edge is. Because I want to bring water level as high as I can up to the bottom of that coping stone, leaving it about two inches below it. It's preventing him from bringing the pipes up over the top. Because if I brought the pipes up over the top of the liner it would be very challenging for us because of the way elevations are to hide those pipes so we're going to go ahead and do a watertight seal using the bulkhead fittings and run those pipes through the back of the vault back over in this area in through here so what we can do is this liner will stay up vertical like this and then we'll use these bulkhead fittings and tighten everything up that way
So I wanted to show you guys exactly what we were talking about with those bulkhead fittings. So Roy used a three inch hole saw bit and drilled out the two holes. That's where our bulkhead fittings are going to come through the back of the pump vault. Next thing he did is he lined up the liner flush up against the backside side of the pump vault and figured out approximately where these bulkhead fittings are going to be penetrating through the liner. Then he took the bulkhead fitting, used a silver Sharpie or a white Sharpie and then traced the outline. The reason you don't want to hold this liner up here and then trace the hole is that three inch hole would be too big and there's too much variance in there. So we want to have that liner as tight to the circumference of the threaded part of this bulkhead fitting without kind of overlapping and coming up like that. So we need it very, very precise. You can always take more off later than to try and put it back on, which sucks. So what Roy's going to do now is he's going to take his knife, cut out those two circular holes, and then I'll show you the next couple steps. All right, so we've got our two holes cut. Now Roy's gonna go ahead and insert the bulkhead fitting through there. Then we've got our rubber gasket that will go on. He's gonna go ahead and install both of them. Rubber gasket goes on the water side, always. Then he's going to attach the liner through those two bulkhead fittings. Then he'll take the plastic gasket. So now what Roy will do is he will get these hand tight, then he's gonna go get a pair of channel locks. Give those things anywhere from a quarter to a half turn. You don't wanna over tighten them, but you wanna make sure that you have compression on this rubber gasket right here in order to create that watertight seal. An MPT goes in the back of each one and then we'll connect the pipes. It is end of day two. We uh, made a lot of progress today. Let me spin you guys around and show you guys what we uh, did today. As you can tell, we have water going in the pond. Actually, this water is only gonna stay in here temporarily. Um, I'm only filling it up another two inches. I just wanna double check that when we were working in here that we didn't damage the liner at all or ding the liner with all the rocks, especially with there only being double layer fabric and then liner sitting on top of that cement. But as we continue on, we got our intake bait done and we got our edges packed up against the rock so that way when we do fill this pond up we can double check all our edges and make sure that there's no leaks or low edges in here and we can finish those edges tomorrow once we still fill this pond up but we got our plumbing all hooked up we just got to install the pumps tomorrow and as you see this is where our pump wall is in our intake bay so that's where our two pumps will sit and then those two bulkheads one feeds the bowl and then one feeds the biofalls up top but we uh we did a quick drain and rinse on this today just to get rid of all the mucky dirt that was inside of all this gravel and then if you were to come if I walk over here, we were able to finish this wall. You guys have seen our previous videos before, our unilock wall that we did, and it's a nice cove look that we're going for in this area. So we we're able to get that rock set and then build off that and then work our way all the way around to this big rock here. But yeah, all this rock work in here is done and out of the way. And we have our two lock line jets down there pushing all that water back towards our intake bay. We got our patio done. We got our three pieces of flagstone that are gonna be cantilevered over on top of this wall. Those are cut and roughly placed. Tomorrow we're gonna come in here and finish this entire patio, level off all these stones and finish this entire pond. So tomorrow, as I was saying, we're gonna come in here and actually it's gonna be pretty cool but we're gonna do a slate bottom and as you saw at the beginning when we we're right before we tore out this pond you would notice that we had small pieces of slate at the bottom of this pond well this time we're gonna be doing the similar to what we did before but we're gonna do three to four slabs of blue stone slate that we have in the back so today we carved with cardboard all around all these rocks to give it that extra 10% that we like to add inside of our ponds but we always wanted to do a slate bottom and this is where we're gonna be able to actually put it to work and see how it looks in here. So hopefully it turns out the way we want it to. I'm really looking forward to how this is gonna turn out. Maybe because I'm actually doing it, but who knows. So as always, stay tuned and we will uh, see you guys in a few short seconds for you guys. Unfortunately for me, I gotta wait a couple hours until tomorrow, but until then, we'll see you guys then. Bye.
Hey guys, Jack D here, coming from inside the retail store. So we're finishing up this front pond we got. We got Dan and Luis doing some of the patio over there, getting the joints nice and tight. Doing it go. <laughs> we got Steve doing some of the lighting over here. And I'm over here tackling the front bottom of the pond. We want a nice flat bottom look, so we decided to use stacked slate, and we're gonna get those joints nice and tight. So what Jack and I did last night, and I'll show you this out front, we just got some small pieces of cardboard, went along and traced out along each of the rocks, and taped them all together. So let me take you out front and I'll show you what we got. So we're outside now, it's a little cold. Let me put on my hood. So what we were working on out here, as I said, we were trying to get those joints as tight as possible for inside the pond to uh, give it a nice flat bottom. So as you can see here, we used that technique of cutting out the cardboard to match the contours of the inside of the pond. It looks a little bit like hopscotch, but I promise it'll look great when we finish cutting everything. So we're gonna choose our pavers here, lay them out, and then put uh, the cardboard right on top and should be able to do some nice curves. Stay tuned. So we finished up tracing out, getting our template all ready for the bottom of the pond. Got all our pieces is cut. Here's our first one and uh, we're going to see how she fits. Super, super, super excited for how this slate floor is going to look. This was something that we attempted to do a few years back and some of the guys that uh, were working on it didn't quite pull off exactly what we wanted to do. So now we're taking the opportunity after realizing that we could do an even better job, we're taking the opportunity to go ahead and try this and this kind of slate floor bottom that you've seen on some of our larger recreational ponds. But we really wanted to showcase it here inside of our retail store as part of our facelift for this ecosystem pond. So I think everything's gonna fit like a glove knowing those two guys and their attention to detail, but I'm super excited how it's gonna turn out. So, let's go. this was kind of your project, right? It was the idea that kind of I had, but you know, I conveyed it to you. You thought it was a great idea. I think it's a great idea after looking at what you guys created. The water's a little murky right now, but Jack is putting in the last piece. And did you have to recut anything? Not one, didn't have to recut one piece. What? <laughs> It would have taken me 10 weeks to try and do this. Oh. Broke one piece, I guess. You broke one piece? <laughs> It'll just look like an additional seam down there. I can tell, it's probably hard for the viewers to tell, but I think it looks incredible down there at the bottom. We just have to dress up some of the edges, right, where the fabric's showing. Some fabric, extra gravel. Nice work. We'll get it cleaned up. Now that that's in, we can start filling the pond. Rinse it down and then fill it, and then give, the, give yeah. the viewers a bird's eye view with crystal clear water of the craftsmanship that you guys did. What do you guys think? Incredible, right? The gang did an, a fantastic job renovating this ecosystem pod inside our retail store. We did the intake bay. We revamped the waterfalls while fixing the seal on the faceplate. We also added that incredible slate bottom floor and really, really, really took this pond to the even next level. So as we mentioned in this video, it wasn't a total gut job where we completely overhauled it top to bottom. This was more of a facelift. However, a few of the projects inside our store are some of those start to finish builds. Behind me is that small, elegant, simple pondless waterfall 
where we use the Moss Rock and the two spillway bowls. This video has already been released, but if you haven't seen it, click the link below so you can find out how this thing was made. Super excited to bring this into the retail store because it adds a, a new unique element to this side of the store, but it also showcases our bowls and a simple pondless waterfall all in one. Speaking of top to bottom projects, we also have an incredible project that will be coming out here shortly. We're continuing to work on it inside of our store and we're very, very close to getting it finished. So that video will be coming out soon. Can't wait for you guys to see it. So if you guys want to stay up to date on all the brand new and exclusive Team Aquascape content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, click the notification bell. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or good jokes, feel free to let us know that as well. But until next time, we'll see you later.